Stanley's death marks the passing of a generation. It doesn't seem so long ago that in the center block where I had my office for many years myself, that once a year I would notice a group gathering in the parliamentary dining room to remember an earlier time, but also with an ever keen eye to the present and the future. They would run to at Stanley's office. Tommy Dutton, King Gordon, Frank Scott, Graham Spry, Sandy Nichols, David Lewis, and others. This was a generation that left its mark on Canada, a generation who dreamed of a better world and committed themselves to the political, intellectual, and social struggle that realizing such a world demanded. The times we live in breed a meanness of spirit and a narrowness of vision that magnify the qualities of Stanley's generation and tempt us, and tempt us to say that we shall not see their like again. But to say that would be to sin against the greatest thing that Stanley and his friends always had in abundance, and that was hope. Hope for a new day, and hope that each generation would take up the prophetic struggle for social justice in its own time and in its own way. Even now, men and women are networking around the globe, pulling together the movement that will challenge the global marketplace in the way that Stanley's generation challenged the more national marketplace of his time. In 1960, Stanley Knowles said, democracy is not real unless the people, through their elected institutions, control the economic order. He also said, the fearsome fact of our time is that elements other than government have assumed the role of directing our affairs. In 1997, as a result of free trade, globalization, and the dictatorship of the money markets. It is a fearsome fact of a magnitude unimagined in 1960 that governments don't control the economic order. In fact, it's absolutely the reverse. Those of us here who would follow in Stanley's footsteps must address this fact not as a reality to be accepted or even celebrated as it is in some quarters, but as a challenge to democracy and to justice that must be surmounted. How shall we remember Stanley Knowles? We will remember him on his feet on the floor of the House of Commons, relentlessly and persistently prodding, pushing, provoking, and even inspiring successive governments to act. We will remember him sitting at his desk for long hours in the Commons, handwriting notes to his constituents while listening to debate. We will remember the happy partisan warrior handing out his speeches and NDP pamphlets at the CN and CP shop gates in Winnipeg on cold winter morning. We will remember his love for Parliament and the way he embraced the opportunity to continue to be in the House of Commons even after his retirement. And we will remember the kind of Canada he helped to build and when we do, we will rededicate ourselves to making sure that the forces arrayed against that Canada never prevail. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. For Stanley, the time to die has come and gone. And the time has arrived for Stanley Knowles to hear the voice of his master saying, well done good and faithful servant. Amen.